After many years of petting every dog she ever encountered, she finally got her own dog. It's Yeti, a seven-month-old Bernadoodle, and she is very excited for that for that dog. So, please welcome Emily Robinson. Hi, everyone. Very excited to be here. Uh, as Jared said, I now have uh, a second dog who is currently running around behind me. Uh, his name is Yeti. Uh, yeah, but very excited to be here, uh, even virtually. Thank you all for joining. And today I'll be talking about funnel join, uh, defining a tidy grammar of funnels in R. So before I start, I want to you know establish, well, what is a funnel uh, exactly? And I define a funnel as a set of events by users over time. So for example, let's say you're an e-commerce company redesigning the homepage of your website. Before doing so, if you're a product manager and analyst, you might have some questions that would inform this design. Like, what's the last page people visit before coming to the homepage? What are all the product pages people see after the homepage? Or how many people who visit the homepage go on to buy something? What if we limit that to buy within two days? So those are all different kinds of first this, then that questions. And that's an example of uh, online behavior, but it doesn't necessarily need to be that. It doesn't even need to be people. So for example, you could ask which salmon migrated to station one, then station three before station two. What drugs do people take in the last month before starting drug X? Or what was the last ad clicked before registering? So these are all different types of questions where you're asking, okay, I wanna know what happened um, you know, in, in what sequence uh, of events? What companies had their stock hit $100 per share then drop to 40? So let's take one of those examples of, let's say we want to know when a user's first landing was and their first registration afterward. So if we have these two example uh, data sets. You know, these are pretty small. We have a landed table and a registered table. So these have the user IDs of who did the landing or the registration and the timestamp, in this case, the day that they did it. Now, you know, if you ask this question, you could probably do it, and maybe your workflow would look something like this. So you'd first filter to get the first landing uh, uh, per user. Then you'd left join with registrations based on user ID. You'd filter for only those registrations that happened after the landing or when there's no registration. And then finally, you need to only get their first registration afterwards. So again, you'd have to arrange and then get the distinction so you only have one row per user. So this is doable, but that's a fair amount of steps. And let's say you slightly change the question to who registered the first time ever after their last landing. So now again, we keep the first step of we filter landed for the last row per user. We've switched it up now to the last instead of the first. Then we need to left join, but we need to left join on registrations only on people's first registrations. And then we need to again filter for the registration time, time being after the landing or there not being a landing. So this is possible, but you can imagine there is a bunch of like fragile steps here, right? What if you forget to switch it to descending for the landing? What if you forget to do a distinct for the registration? So there's just a lot of places that errors can be introduced with, uh, you know, having this much code and needing to change, you know, a fair amount between the exact type of question you're asking. So that's why I created the funnel join package along with David Robinson and Anthony Baker. So you can find Funnel Join on my GitHub, Robinson ES, and it's also on CRAN. So Funnel Join is about making these types of questions easier by defining a uh, function to do this and defining specific types of exact registrations, of exact, sorry, exact funnels. So the goal of this talk is that previously you might have been like this with funnels where you had, you know, you, you, you'd be willing to do it, but it would be a little difficult. For those of you who don't know, this is Cinderblock, and poor Cinderblock came to the shelter pretty overweight, so you know they had to get her on a exercise plan. But as you can see, she was not especially enthusiastic about this. Now, after this talk, you'll be taking your first steps. You'll be figuring out, okay, I can now you know start tackling these types of questions using this new package funnel join. 
And then because funnel join is, I promise you, so is, is straightforward and I would like to think fairly well documented. After this, you'll just be sailing over problems, no issues. So let's take an overview of the package. So the main function in funnel join is after join, which asks, uh, which is defines this grammar. So let's take that question of when was each user's first landing and their first registration afterward. So this is what the funnel join workflow looks like. So let's break it down step by step. So first we have the first two tables. So we have the landed and the registration table. And the first table is the one that's the you know, first event, what happens first, and the second table is what happens after. Then we define what is the user column name. So in this case, basically what's the link, what's the identifier that links these events together? In our case, it's user ID. Then we have what are the time column names? In our case, timestamp. And finally, the type of after join. And so the type is one, is what's really powerful about funnel join because the type argument specifies, okay, what, what type of funnel do we want? In this case, we want someone's uh, first landing and their first registration afterward. So there's a couple different types of funnels that we can have. And let's take some examples. So this is a person, George, who has some ad clicks and conversion events on a website. And so I've colored it here where green is conversion and blue are ad clicks. And so left to right, it goes over you know, a series of time. So let's say we have the question, what is George's first ad click and his first conversion afterward? So again, this is the first, first after. And here we're linking the first, the first blue square, the ad click to the first conversion afterward. But maybe instead we wanna know what's his most recent ad click and all the conversions afterward. So here we take the last ad click and we link it to both conversions that happen afterward. And this is a last any, because we want the last ad click and we want any conversions afterward. And finally, maybe we want the biggest funnel possible. We want all of the ad clicks and all of the conversions afterward. So we draw all of these links between every ad click and all the conversions afterward, and this is an any any join. So these are three different funnels. Uh, and these are the only thing you have to change in the code of after join is that type argument that's saying, what type of funnel do you want? And there are 16 types of funnels that you can define. So they are any combination of for the first table, first, last, any, and last before. And for the second table, first, last, any, and first after. So let's do a demo. So I'm going to be analyzing Stack Overflow questions that are tagged with R. If you want to download this yourself, you can go to Kaggle, uh, where they have this data set. So here I'm going to take both the questions and the answers data sets. So these are questions tagged with R and the answers for them. And we can see they have the things that we need. They have an owner user ID, the person who asked the question or gave the answer. And they have the time, the creation date, that they did so. So those are the two components we need to use funnel join. So let's ask how many people who ask a question later answer one. So this is just as we've been seeing before a first first after. So because we only want one row per user, uh, we want just first uh, because otherwise, you know, for example, if we had any, we could have many rows per user if they ask multiple questions. So let's just get the first question they ask and the first one that they uh, answer afterward. We're doing a left join, so we're making sure to keep all the people who ask questions, regardless if they answer. Um, and we're linking on creation date and owner user ID. And just a little trick here with the suffix. So this was actually something I didn't know before I, I was creating this package, but Deepplier offers this as well. If you want the columns that aren't joined on, but are common between the tables, if you don't want them to have uh, like .x and .y as their suffix, you can actually define and say, in this case, I want underscore question, underscore answer. So then we can do uh, summarize conversions. Uh, and this is another function in funnel join where we can uh, say, okay, let's um, take this table. So this table would have been a very long table with all of the questions and whether or not they had an answer. And let's just summarize it uh, to answer this question. In this case, I wanna get the uh, percent that I'm gonna call it converted 
And I do this by saying converted equals ID answer. So if they have an entry for ID answer, which they'll only have if they answered a question, uh, then count it. If not, don't. And so we can see in the summary that we had 60,000 users, uh, 13,688 answered a question, which is 22.7%. Now, how long does it take for people to answer their first question? So what we have here in funnel join is another argument called gap call. And if we set it to true, it will add a column dot uh, gap, which is the length of time in seconds between uh, the two events. So in this case, length of time between a question and an answer. And I'm gonna mutate that to hours, just to make it a little bit easier. And we can get a graph from that so we can see that uh, in this case, there is uh, some people who you know answered within an hour, uh, a lot more within a day, a week, or you know some people who wait a month or more. What about what percent answer within a week of asking their first question? So you know we could work with the um, data we had before, where we got that gap column to answer this. But again, Funnel Join offers a bit of an easier way to do this, which is you can set a max gap argument. So the max gap argument can take either a diff time object, in this case, we're saying one week, or it can take uh, an integer in which is the number of seconds. So here I'm saying, okay, I only want to join if uh, there is a gap of a maximum a week. And so in this case, if someone answered a question after a month, it would not join in that data about the answer. So. Now we see we have the same number of users, which makes sense, right? We're still doing a left join to questions. We're still doing a first, first, after, but we have many fewer conversions because we're excluding people who answered after a week. So in this case, 8.8% 8 .8 of people answered a question within a week of asking their first question. Now, you know, we might change this up a little bit and say, well, what about answering a question before asking one? So all of this has been assuming, you know, it goes question and then answer, but of course there's nothing inherent in uh, this in this data and stack overflow behavior that says someone couldn't uh, answer a question before asking. So to do this, we switch it up. We now want answers to be the first table uh, and questions to be the second because answers is happening before questions. We change it to a right join because you wanna keep all the people asking questions. And then again, we summarize the conversions and we summarize and we say, okay, only people who had um, you know, answered a question before asking would be in the ID answer. And we find that 4.63% of people answer a question before asking it. And here, I just wanna point out the type argument being a first first because we wanna know, okay, someone's first ever answer, did that happen before their first ever question? So in conclusion, I wanna talk about why I created this package a little more. Because the goals of Funnel Join is to go from something that is, quote, impossible to possible. And I put this in quotes because of course it wasn't impossible before, right? Um, you know, all the packages you have, it's, it's possible because you're writing R code that, that supports those packages. But it could have been something that maybe uh, you didn't know how to do, or even if you could eventually figure it out, you know, you thought, oh, it's just going to take too long. I don't want to bother. Um, so this is just really hopefully unlocking, especially for newer R users, um, a whole new set of questions and possibilities. It's going from something that is time consuming and potentially error prone to quick and easy. So as I showed at the beginning, you know, it was all of these lines of code, all of these steps to try to answer this question without funnel join. And if you switched up the question a bit, you started having to, you know, tweak a lot of parts of that workflow and that could potentially lead to some errors. Uh, versus funnel join, the hope is that this really makes it pretty quick and easy through things like, of course, the type argument, but also these extra arguments. Like you wanna know the time between events, do gap call equals true. You wanna say at most have this much time between events, you can uh, do the max gap argument. There's also a min gap argument if you want people who say did the second event at least a week afterwards. So funnel join is hopefully gonna make a lot of this process much easier. And finally, going from limited creativity to asking and answering new questions. So what I mean by this is before I had 
funnel join, I was not actually asking uh, or getting the answers to nearly as many types of questions around these sort of behavioral funnels. But once I had it, once it became so easy to just like get the answer, I realized I wasn't just you know, more quick in answering questions, I was thinking of so many more. I was just coming up with more things uh, because it has sort of just unlocked this creativity in me. And that's why, for example, um, you know, I think ggplot2 is so popular and so great is because it makes it so easy to, you know, switch between different types of graph to do this exploratory analysis that it really, you know, enables you to think of, of lots of different things to try it out because you know it's going to be, you know, so, so quick and so, so easy to do so. If you want to learn more, uh, I have a blog post with that Stack Overflow data. So all of the uh, the demo I did today, it's all on uh, this blog post on my blog, hookedondata.org, uh, along with a little bit more explanation. There's also a vignette uh, that you can find on Cran's website. And if you just Google funnel join vignette, you'll find it. And it adds some more things like the max gap argument um, and some additional functions that funnel join has. As I mentioned, I have my website, hookedondata.org. I'm also on Twitter at Robinson underscore ES. Uh, as I said, you can find Funnel Join. It's both on CRAN, and you can also find uh, it on GitHub, on my GitHub, Robinson ES slash Funnel Join. And as I think Jared's mentioned, uh, unrelated to Funnel Join, I also wrote a book with Jacqueline Knowles called Build a Career in Data Science, uh, which you can find at datasidecareer.com. Uh, and I think there's some free copies to give away and you can also get 40% off with build book 40%. With that, thank you all so much.